Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our spiritual communion here at St. Mark's Church in Conneskey. Hopefully, you will have your orders of service in front of you as we begin our worship. Just get my gel on. And first of all, you will have heard our hymn, and we're now going to have our gathering prayer. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. And so we pray together. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so, bringing our sins before God, we pray together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we have our collect as we celebrate All Saints Day today. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to also follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Amen. A reading from Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, 
Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34 I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him, and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you are his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. A reading from 1 John See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and he sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the pure in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. 
I'm going to start today with a little story, if you don't mind. A few years ago, I found myself being a little encouraged by all the space that I could see in the pews in front of me on a Sunday. I was a church warden. I found, my, I found as part of that. I went to the deanery meetings and then the missionary meetings. And amongst other things, we talked about evangelism, how we could encourage more people into the building on a Sunday, and how to make sure we could reach the parish share for that quarter. As though those two things went hand in hand. Never mind hand in hand, they go like bums on seats and hands in wallets. But as I stood up one morning to read the lessons, I actually really was quite upset by the gaps between the congregation. Being good Anglicans, most of them were scattered towards the back of the church. I mentioned this to my vicar. It was after the service and I will never forget what was said back to me. This church isn't empty, I was told. Couldn't you see all the saints sitting there? This actually did put a very different slant on my perspective. You may remember back in 2018, there were installations of Perspex soldiers in churches. This was put up to mark the fallen from World War I, but it also reminds us, reminded me anyway, of this conversation that just because somebody's not there doesn't mean they're not there. Today, more than ever, this conversation's bopping around in my mind as I'm trying to reconcile yet again where churches are closed and we're gathering in such a remote fashion. It's an oxymoron. Alex has recorded this service in an empty church. I'm in my living room and we're all watching or listening from our own space. But are we alone? No, we're really not, is the answer to that one. There are 168 hours in a week. I double checked. In the normal scheme of things, we gather in church for about an hour out of those 168. Does that mean that we're not Christians for the other 167? Not likely. And this is what the author of Revelations, John of Patmos, is getting at when he wrote, there was a great multitude that nobody could count. All the Christians that have gone before us and all those who are going to follow, we might not be able to see them, but you are surrounded nonetheless. This is the great crowd of saints that we are a part of and that we're honouring today. But what is a saint? We've so many famous figures that we can choose from. Those heroes of our faith that we might have learned about in Sunday school, or on saints days in church, like we found out about Luke the Evangelist the other week. There are beautiful renditions of them in stained glass, stunning marble statues, carved as an expression of faith through our history. And they often seen images of perfection glowing skin, beatific smiles, and if I'm honest, something really quite unobtainable for the likes of me. It's no coincidence that they're called the pillars of the church, as quite often saints' lives are placed on pedestals as an example for us to look up to. And yet one thing that this year has taught us is that pedestals can be knocked over. Those images from earlier in the year, from the Black Lives Matter protests, bringing down statues that shone a critical spotlight on how challenging it can be to put somebody on and take off a pedestal. And one thing to remember is that these images that we see every day in town squares, museums and churches, they're of human beings. And being human usually means a little bit of good and bad. Heroes can be made and brought back down again as social, the social tide changes injustices are corrected. But we are honouring the saints today, all of them in their multitude, and the church does hold them up on pedestals. But like I said, they were only human. There is a wonderful piece of artwork by a chap called Parker Fitzgerald. He was commissioned to create this piece for a Christmas card. You might gather in a moment how much I love this picture. It's in the style of an icon. It's showing the Virgin Mary and her baby, but it isn't saccharine sweet like many of these Christmas images have a tendency to be. 
No, it actually shows a young woman holding a newborn and there is something challenging in her expression. She's feisty, she's exhausted. She's holding her child protectively in her arms and you can almost hear her snarling. Come on then and have a go. It's an image of somebody real. It's not an idea of perfection. John of Patmos explains the crowd he sees. These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. Like any of us, life happens and it isn't all roses and light. All of us, all the saints back through history, we're doing the best that we can with what we have. And yes, mistakes are made because we're not perfect. But that's okay because the, li the saints weren't perfect either. And yet their lives were touched by God. It was God's grace that triumphed in them and it does in us. The gospel values that Jesus preaches in the Sermon on the Mount are of compassion, justice and peace. And Jesus names the hardships that we all face in life as blessings. And in our lives, we're treading a path that many a person before us has stepped. At the end of the Beatitudes, Jesus reminds his listeners of the prophets who were before you. Being aware of the great crowds of saints around us, companions on our road of faith, it reminds us that we're not alone. The space that is between us can be brought closer by something as simple as a prayer, it can be closed. And although the Beatitudes in the Gospel reading might sound like they're speaking of perceived weaknesses, there is a strength in being able to turn to God, even in adversity. You might know this old saying, when life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. And when that happens, God will wipe every tear from our eyes. I'm not meaning to sound flippant, but, these readings today point towards the strength that can be found in the weakest of us. The famous saints we know about, they mourned, they were poor in spirit at times, and they hungered for righteousness. Good grief, some of them did so in spectacular fashion. But it wasn't only them. Do you know who else is dressed in those white robes described in the Revelation readings? You are. I am. Potentially, each and every person you meet this week will be. The saints were human and had all those human attributes, both good and bad, and yet God's power shone through them. How are we being called to live this week in a saintly life? To live up to the values listed in the Beatitudes for the next 167 hours until we gather again. Let your light shine. Join in with the multitudes from every nation and every tribe and let your voice join in with that song which has been sung from the very beginning and will do to the very end. And you know what? We all allow the grace of God to shine through us despite the ordeals of life. This week, go on, carry on being the wonderful saints that you are. Amen. Thank you so much for those wise words. So now we're all going to join together with our affirmation of faith. I believe and trust in God the Father, who created all that is. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we turn to Stephen, who will lead us in our intercessions today. Let us pray. Glory to you, O Lord, from the whole company of heaven, from the saints in glory, from your people on earth. Father, we give you thanks that in the darkness of this world your saints shine. May we with them have a share in your everlasting kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We give you praise for holy men and women who have been an inspiration to us. For those who have set us an example to follow. We remember those who were fully dedicated to you and your glory. Those holy martyrs who looked forward to entering your kingdom. 
men and women who stood up for the faith and set themselves against evil. May your church be inspired by their lives, seek to keep before it their dedication and follow after their vision. We pray for all who are seeking to fulfil their vocation, for all who seek to quietly dedicate themselves to you and your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You have called us to a world full of good things. We thank you all who have set out to improve our world. We pray for all who work in conservation, for those who care for others, for all who have sacrificed themselves in the service of others, for those who seek to live simply, that others may simply live. Lord, in your mercy, We give you thanks for those who have taught us the faith, for those who gave generously and sacrificially for us, for all who have led us in the ways of goodness and truth. We pray that our homes and our work may be places of holiness, that we may be an example to others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are being persecuted or suffering for their faith, all who are facing mockery and scorn, all whose faith is being tested at this time. We pray for all in sickness and for those approaching death. Remember all those at this time who are known to us who are sick, all those listed in our intercessions books. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant us a share in the inheritance of your saints in glory. May we at the last be part of the church which is victorious. We give thanks today for all your saints, especially Saint David and also of Saint Mark. And we join our praises with theirs. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we offer up our own prayers to you at this time, our own thoughts, our own petitions. Lord, in your mercy, And as we face another lockdown and we are having services at home with coronavirus rife again in Wales, we pray the prayer for coronavirus together. God, heal the world, fill empty hearts, feed the hungry, free lost souls, fight coronavirus. Forge us towards peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And so, merciful Father, we ask that you accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue in prayer by praying the prayer of humble access. 
We pray this together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Well, hello everybody. It's time for our notices. And as you can see, I've come back to the study for the notices today. They should all be on your pew sheet, but I'll go through some of them so you can hear them even if you haven't got the sheets. Uh, first of all, as you know, we're still in the lockdown, but I heard the news yesterday. Mark Drayford seems to think we're coming out of it shortly on the day that he promised. So uh, lots of prayers for that for us all. Uh, so hopefully then we can come back for private prayer on Tuesday, the 10th of November and have our first Sunday worship on the 15th of November in both churches, which is really, really good news. And until then, we'll have our online services. So um, also, if you want to listen to the sermon and you know people who can't, they can ring for the dial a sermon. And that's 01244 268 428. And that's the price of a local call. And you'll hear the sermon that we're hearing now today. Um, just to let you know that there, there's going to be an All Souls service as well, which is online, and that will be tomorrow, which is Monday night at 6 o'clock. And I'll post that on Facebook and on Twitter as well. And, and that's a service where all those people who've given me names, we've had to pre-record it. So what I've done is I've left a space for people who couldn't get names to me in time. So you should be able to light a candle at home and say the name of the person that you want to remember. Um, but I'll put it on uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter at 6 o'clock tomorrow on Monday evening for you. Um, of course, this afternoon we've got our vestry meeting and it's on Zoom. Now, I know lots of you won't be able to make it and I've already contacted you to see if you'll sort out your um, continue to the end of the year, I should say, which would be the vestry that we'd normally have come sort of like February, March next year. So if you can continue for the rest of this year, and I know that virtually everybody has said yes to that. So it should be quite a simple vestry, she says. That's at two o'clock this afternoon. And uh, the Zoom ID, which is 610-345-5175. And uh, the password is on your sheets for you. Um, like I say, it'd be quite short. What I've done is as well on the few sheets is Brenda's given me her treasurer's report for October 2020. So we'll have that as well that we can um, sort everything out from there. Just so you know where we're up to. Uh, obviously the vestry as well, Brenda's mentioned about the toilet and uh, I'd just like to really thank uh, Brenda. I know there's been a little team of you so we're going to do a proper thank you when we're proper open for the people that have helped with that, putting the toilets into the um, marks. This is fantastic and of course for the generous donation from the boys club as well. But we're going to do a proper thank you for that. Um, we have um, funerals coming up, so if you can please keep them in your prayers at the time. We've got Stephen, who's Monday the 2nd of November at Northup. Jean Thomas, Monday the 2nd of November at Northup too. Granville Wiles is the 3rd of November in Blaken. And Colin Raymond Bell, who I think many of you might know, uh, that's at St Mark's Church and that's at 12 noon on the 12th of November. Just to let you know that Reverend Helen and I won't be around on the 9th and 10th very much because we've got incumbent and newly licensed minister training. Woo! <laughs> it's, they're both going to be quite long days. So if you really need to contact me, if you can either messenger me or email me, at least I can get sort of back in touch with you fairly swiftly that way. Um, and then we have one birthday this week that I know of, and that's Marjorie Wright. So I'm going to pop a little balloon for me. Oh, will you have seen some of that come towards you? And I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads in prayer. <laughs> she whacked the smoke away as we pray for Marjorie. Lord, we give you our thanks for Marjorie, for her dedication to faith, for her wonderful marriage to John, and for her family life. We give thanks for everything that she does in your name, knowing it is of you. And we pray that she would know that you would be with her this year and every year. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. 
So there we go. That is the notices. There's not as many this week, is there? That's because we've just got lots of services for different things this week. Uh, but as again, I'll update you as soon as I know anything of what's going on. All right. Speak to you soon. Bye. And so after our notices, we will join together with the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. And we make a sign, a virtual sign of the peace to one another. The peace of the Lord be with you. We're now going to hear our second hymn. Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears. They laid him down. for the thanksgiving. We celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. 
The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is always right wherever we are to thank you and to praise you, God our Father and King forever, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him you made us and the whole universe. When your Holy Spirit came to Mary, Jesus was born as one of us. He loved us so much that he died for us. On the first Easter day, you raised him to life, and death and evil were conquered forever. At Pentecost, you gave the Holy Spirit, as Jesus promised to help us live as your children. So here on earth with angels and archangels, and with everyone in heaven, we praise your name and say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father in heaven, listen to the prayer we make in Jesus' name. Through the Holy Spirit's power, gentle as a dove. May this bread and this wine be for us his body and blood. Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread. He thanked you, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, Drink from this cup, because this is my cup, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. And so let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. And so we turn to prayer to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we turn to our spiritual communion, which we say together. O oh, blessed Lord, in union with the faithful throughout the world, at every altar of your church where the Eucharist is being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. Since I cannot now receive you in the sacrament, I invite you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with my heart and mind and soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me, so that I may live and die in your love. And so we come to the sending out. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. The Lord be with you, and also with you. 
God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all of your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. I hope that you have a very blessed week ahead. I know that hopefully, God willing, here in Wales, we'll be heading into the last part of the lockdown. And we just pray for all those people who have been affected by the virus at this time. But for now, I'm going to say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>